Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm still a bit sick, actually. You probably can hear it from my voice. Um, okay. Hi. What, what's your name? Uh, my name is Michaela. Sure Hello. I hi. work for EQ as a social media manager and video producer. And um, I will be doing this interview today. Perfect. Okay. So uh, we can start. So um, I will just explain uh, for the beginning. Uh, I came up with this idea that it would be amazing to revisit some uh, previous uh, screened uh, film at EQ and uh, your movie uh, interests me very much. And uh, it is considered even as one of the greatest uh, films. And I think that it would be um, amazing to tell to our audience how far you came uh, since the film uh, was um, screened and uh, how was your uh, filmmaking journey since then. But before we get to that, um, maybe uh, I would love uh, you to uh, like telling a little bit about yourself and introducing yourself and but mostly like as a creator, as a filmmaker and um, how did you start but yeah, briefly. Yeah, well, so thanks for, for having me, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I um, I'm originally from Italy, um, mm -hmm. but my uh, sort of filmmaking career mostly takes place in the UK, in London. Mm -hmm. So I moved to London in 2010 to study film at London College of Communication. So that's where I got my um, sort of first experiences on proper film sets before I had actually attended a film school for one year in Florence and film and sort of video in general has always been part of my life because both my parents uh, worked in advertisements uh, yeah. my father more specifically had some uh, did some work in, in film distribution as well um, so I grew up sort of around cameras photo cameras and video cameras so they always interested me and um, yeah, and then eventually I decided to sort of follow up on the interest. And uh, yeah, so as a matter of fact, my, my filmmaking career runs quite parallel to Echo. So the first mm -hmm. time I was at Echo was in 2014, so mm -hmm. 10 years ago almost. Um, mm -hmm. And that was with actually my graduation film, uh, which okay. is called Otto Floss, Students Watcher. And we were in the student category. And uh, it was one of the first festivals, film, short film festivals that I attended back then. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, it's been 10 years since then, so I'm a lot older now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was has part of my, of my uh, journey, <laughs> let's say, yes. Um, and uh, with regards to um, uh, the last few years after the the making of Vishara, mm -hmm. uh, I have actually uh, directed another uh, experimental film, which sort of employs mm -hmm. dance as one of its medium for for uh, story selling. Um, it's called Soma. Mm -hmm. it's, okay. um, you know, we're now in the process of of sort of distributing the film. Okay, and so I'm going to follow up with my next question. What brought you to the idea of uh, making your movie with Vishera? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it well. <laughs> no, that, that's the perfect pronunciation. So uh, what, what made uh, me uh, interested in the film was a conversation I had with the producer and choreographer of the film, Selina Liesgang. She actually came up with the idea of making uh -huh. the film. Uh, in particular, she came up with the idea of making a film in this uh, abandoned hotel uh, in the middle of the ocean, which she had visited once a few years before, and she thought that it would be very interesting to to make a dance film there. And uh, eventually, she came uh, to me uh, and asked whether I was interested in in collaborating and thinking about what could be made there. And uh, she showed me some of the pictures of the of mm -hmm. the place and i immediately fell in love with the with the location mm -hmm. um, and so you know there was a few months of preparation mostly from air end sort of working on the on the movement and the choreography and then we flew there with a very small crew and uh, 
you know, sort of, you know, the whole cell is abandoned, so we didn't really, you know, it was a bit of a guerrilla style uh -huh. action, let's say. Um, it worked out in the end. Uh, and part of the film was actually improvised on location. So we had we had a script and we had some, you know, she had created a choreography, but uh, we also allowed for the space to dictate mm -hmm. some of the some of the scenes and uh, we allowed ourselves to be sort of inspired by by the by the surroundings it's basically and uh, how did you how did the production go over there i mean but um i'm asking more here not like uh, um basically how production is going but let's say if you are talking to filmmakers or beginning filmmakers was there something special or was there something uh, that you would give maybe an advice uh, to the filmmakers to or how did the production go yes i mean compared to other films that i that i made this was actually one of the smallest productions in mm -hmm. a way it was uh, it was really it felt like we were we were playing really in that sense it was truly experimental because we didn't fully know what we were gonna come out with come up with okay. uh, mm -hmm. whilst there so, so i kind of felt end. like you didn't have any end you basically just went with the flow let's say we had some concepts no i mm -hmm. I, I i think i mean and the, the way i work personally i mean everyone works in different ways but i have very strong concepts that mm -hmm. i want to explore uh, but in the in the case of experimental filmmaking, I think you have to allow for for certain kind of flexibility because otherwise it's not experimental, yeah. right? So otherwise, mm -hmm. you have to allow yourself to be surprised by things. And I think if you do enough research before and you have quite clear in mind what you are interested in exploring, then you might find that you are going to do so in ways that uh, you didn't expect. So I mean, I, I, I the advice in general is sometimes to. Uh, just allow oneself to be uh, uh, captured by the process and to allow yourself to to forget uh, about what is right and wrong and, mm -hmm. and see what works uh, in a specific moment, especially if you're working with uh, more experimental forms. Mm -hmm. But even, even in fiction films, I think there are great moments that um, in, in almost every film that, that I've made, Eight. and uh, there, there are some scenes that were originated as, as a mistake or shots that, that were outtakes. Mm -hmm. There's always something in the margins to, to be alerted to, I think. Yes. So you have to have that open mind. Open mind, that's amazing. And uh, so, and your movie, Visera, uh, won the best prize for best editing, which is amazing. I am very interested in uh, film editing. And um, my question is, would you think that it, the editing, like what it made uh, stand out, like what was so special about the editing that it won the prize? What do you think or how did their post-production went? I don't know what was so special about it. I was very surprised. I edited mm -hmm. the film, and so oh. when 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 the prize was announced, I, I yeah I couldn't believe my ears. You, were, you, you couldn't um, believe it. <laughs> yeah, so I I don't know exactly. I think it was a long post production. What I can say is that mm -hmm. it took over a year to edit. There was a lot of revisions. There was a lot of back and forth. There were pauses. We, you know, uh, and uh, again, actually, um, it, when when the edit was almost finished, I mean, actually, it was supposed to be finished quite late at night. A, a sort of mistake happened in the editing software. I, I by mm -hmm. by mistake, I, I dropped a an effect on one of the scenes. This is the fighting scene. And suddenly I saw something new. It was completely by chance. So the, the film was finished. It had been in the post-production for, for one year. And, and I messaged Selena, uh, the producer and choreographer, and said, you know, I, I know this sounds crazy. We're supposed to be done. But I, I want to try something new with the edits. And mm -hmm. she, she said, OK, you know, well, let's go for it. We don't have a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a final deadline that we have to meet. So I th think that 
in part of in particularly with this film it was the open ended dimension of the post production that helped sometimes it helps to have deadlines and be you know to have a sort of set time that you have to to finish the film in but in this case it was really open and at some, at some points it felt even hopeless like you know are we going to ever going to finish yeah. and make something mm -hmm. coherent out of it <laughs> but uh, yeah but it seems like it 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 worked in in some ways or at least uh, the, the echo uh, judging panel thought so oh, so i'm, I'm very uh, honored and humbled mm -hmm. by that mm -hmm. and uh, how would you describe uh, the difference or how do you feel when you're let's say you mentioned that um, the location of the movie captured your attention so how how do you feel being at the location but then in editing room like what is the difference between those two places for you well the, the editing room is warmer <laughs> it was freezing <laughs> it was freezing there are there are some scenes in the film where um you know bodies are naked and and it was freezing and windy um so you know you you watch it back and you and you sort of uh almost can live again some of the more physical bodily sensations yeah. this is a film about the body ultimately so you can feel it about. because you actually experience it while you're editing yeah because i filmed it as well you know i, right. I did the so... filming the directing the the, the, mm -hmm. the, the editing so uh, i was kind of there from the beginning to the end so yes you have certain physical i think mm -hmm. uh, sensations that are evoked almost like in a proustian manner you know you you feel again the the breeze or or the sort of mm -hmm. smell of moss uh, th there are certain i think impressions uh, that that can come back when when you're editing and do you think it's like great to um actually experience the set in the real time and then going to the editing room or do you think that does it affect your uh, perspective upon the video because eventually you're then sitting in front of your computer you're watching the clips so uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it's a good question i i almost always tend to edit the films i i make I'm also an editor by trade, so that's probably why mm -hmm. I find it very hard to let go of the footage. I, I'm interested in that. I mean, it, it might um, it might be a sort of good thing at some point to try and get someone else to to edit a film that I make. I, I might find something new in the process, but so far. That's the only way I know how to make films is yes. to, to edit them, and um, I'm, I get very attached to the footage. And I've learned with time that it's important to al allow for great footage to to be cut out of the film and not to be too attached to what happens on set, because yes. on set there are magical things that happen, and then you become attached more to the experience of the set than and to the. Um, uh, fact that uh, the footage has to be useful, it has to serve a purpose, and it has to be enjoyed and, and experienced by someone who was not on the set. So I think it's it's a hard balance to, to strike. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I had actually a similar experience last year when I uh, experienced an actual set, and it mm. very much influenced my editing perspective. So yeah. I'm asking. And uh, let's uh, go to the, I think, the most important question. So uh, let's just jump from Wishera, uh, not uh, like forgetting everything that has happened before and prior to that movie. How did your um, filmmaking career and filmmaking journey change since then, since Wishera and since you won the uh, prize uh, for the best uh, editing? Or what, what has happened since then? Gosh, I, I don't I don't know that there has been a dramatic change. Mm -hmm. uh, it has developed further. I think um, Vishra um, was a film that that um, had quite a quite a good uh, sort of festival life. Uh, we got some recognition that always helps in. Um, Mostly, in, apart from like kind of ego boosts, which are at the end of the day, they they really don't um, they don't last long, and, and they're not what drives creative process. 
practices for for forward. But I think recognition helps in getting funding strict, um, for better or worse. Oh, I think it's black. Practitioners around. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my internet is. Oh, it's cutting. working right now. <laughs> okay, it's working. Sorry, I, I just had a signal. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, so the 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 the, the career has developed further. I made another film mm -hmm. uh, called Soma. It's another experimental dance film. It explores further some of the themes uh -huh. that we were interested in in uh, Vishara. They both are films that deal with uh, the relationship between body uh, and and language, let's say, uh, or identity. So so there is something. There is a thread that runs from Vishra to uh, my more recent project Soma. Um, so I see I see them as part of a of a certain uh, phase in in my uh, creative journey. That um, that perhaps Soma marks the end of that phase. I think I'm now mm -hmm. want to go back to making fiction films. So I, so I think are, next year will be a drama. Uh -huh. And are you working on a project right now, or are you like planning? Yes, in very very early stages mm -hmm. of a, of a new project, uh, which will be um, again a film about the body, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of my sort of main research interests. But this time it will be a, a, a fiction film. It will be a drama, and it will probably be playing with the canon of realism. So something very yeah. different from Vishra and also Soma, which are both quite surreal, uh, abstract mm -hmm. uh, pieces. And that is maybe why the editing is so great, because um, body and language, there, there is a lot of movement, which in editing you need to work with the emotion, with movement, with rhythm. And uh, yeah, and uh, I think this could be my last question. Um, as a filmmaker, um, how do you see yourself? Do you think that you're more, let's say, director, producer, editor? What is the best part of filmmaking for you? Um, so I can start with the one that I like the least, which mm -hmm. is producing the film <laughs> and uh, patching the funds. And, uh, you know, that's the part that I that I particularly dislike. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do it. It's part of the job, but it's like that. I think it's of, least artistic, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there are producers who are incredibly creative mm -hmm. people, and and you have to find creative ways. I think to to so so I I wouldn't maybe it's not artistic, but it's definitely creative. Yeah, I think it's just a part where where you need to um, have an ability to to sort of self promote. That uh, mm -hmm. I find a little tricky sometimes, but uh, it's a skill, and uh, you know. People who have it have a great gift, so, you know, and, and we need them in the, in the industry, otherwise yeah. films don't get made. Um, the, the part I like the most is to be on set and, mm -hmm. and the directing part. And the close second would be editing. It's, mm -hmm. it's I love editing as well. But again, I love editing, especially things that I have uh, right. <laughs> either shot or directed. So, so I think the direction part, the being on set, the sort of moments of of um, the mm -hmm. intensity of, of the film set is comes. And first, I actually yeah. have a following question. So, when you're talking about that, you're being on a set, you're directing. Do you already imagine how you're going to edit the movie, or do you just not thinking about it at all, and you do it in the post production process? No, I, I think you always have an edit in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in general, when you when you construct a short list, you have to think about how things might cut together. Um, in the the so you have a basic structure in mind, and then you expand from that. And sometimes you break yes. uh, some of the uh, decisions you made. You you sort of revert mm -hmm. them or you distort them. But I always have a, a broad understanding of how things will. Be cut together and how it will turn out so thank you very much it was a very interesting i think this is going to be interesting also to uh, many people thank you so much uh, i wish you good luck for all of the projects and uh, yeah <laughs> yeah i hope to you know see you maybe in echo in the one of the next editions um 
thanks for your time for inviting me and uh you know thank you for your time either